you to welcome to Thursday's English video. Today we are just going to pick up where we left off yesterday. So yesterday we started writing up our report all about our science investigation into the most absorbent material. So we're just going to carry on from yesterday. Okay, here we go. So yesterday we completed this page and today we are going to move on to this page. So, the first section is all about a FAIR test. Now, we need to think about this word FAIR in terms of science, okay? We might think about sharing something fairly in maths or equally, like we've been doing in maths over the past few weeks, or you might think about being FAIR as in taking turns. We might think about that in PSHE or when we're playing games. But in science, making something a fair test means something slightly different. I want you to pause the video and have a think. See if you can remember from before Christmas when we did some science investigations at school. What does a fair test mean in science? Okay, welcome back. So, in science, a fair test is all about treating the different materials fairly and making sure that one of them doesn't have an advantage over the others. Okay, so to make it a fair test, there are two things that we have to do. And it's normally things that we have to keep the same. So when you did your investigation, what did you have to keep the same for every material to make sure that it was fair? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, welcome back. So, hopefully you have thought of the same things as me. I thought that to keep it fair, you would have to use the same amount of water for each material. It wouldn't be fair if you used a tiny drop of water for one of the materials and a huge spillage for one of the other materials because you wouldn't be able to compare the two fabrics or the two materials if this amount of water wasn't the same. So we can put this into a sentence. To make it a fair test you need to use, now use is a word that lots of you find tricky, use is a split spelling U, use, it doesn't start with the letter Y. To make it a fair test you need to use the same amount of water, that's a year two word, let's make sure we spell that correctly, water, the same amount of water for each material, full stop, it wouldn't, which is short for would not, so I'm going to use an apostrophe, there's wood, N apostrophe T. That apostrophe replaces the letter O in would not. It wouldn't be fair if you used a tiny drop for one material. and a huge spillage for the other. Full stop. Okay, so that's the first way of making it a fair test. The second thing is all about the time. So pause the video and think, what do I mean about the time? What do we have to do to make it a fair test? Hello, welcome back. So
So we need to keep the time the same for every material. So the amount of time you spend rubbing the water with one material, you need to spend the same amount of time rubbing the water with the next material. It wouldn't be fair if you rubbed the first material for two seconds and the second material for 30 seconds because both materials wouldn't have the same opportunity or the same chance to soak up the water in the same way. So that's what I want you to write about. Okay, you can write about keeping the time the same. So pause the video and write that now. Welcome back. So you should have finished your fair test section and now we're going to move on to the conclusion. I've just folded mine so it fits on my table. So the conclusion means what we have concluded from our experiment or our investigation, what we have found out. At the beginning we made a prediction about which material would be the most absorbent or which material would be the best to use instead of kitchen roll for a kitchen cloth to mop up all those spillages you might have in the kitchen. So look back at your results to find out which one was the best. So in my investigation, I tested a towel, some fleece, sort of a fleecy jumper, a knitted jumper and some pajamas. And the towel, mopped up all of the water. The fleece didn't mop any of it up. I was very surprised by that one. The fleece, it start, sort of started repelling the water. Um, a knitted jumper soaked up a little bit, but not much. And the same with the pyjamas. The pyjamas were better than the jumper, but the towel was the best overall. So you would have chosen different materials to me. So your conclusion is going to be about your investigation, not my investigation. So we can start our conclusion by writing in conclusion. It's a good way to start. In conclusion, the best material to use for a kitchen cloth is, and then you're going to write the material from your investigation, because, And then you're going to write your reason. Why is that one the best material to use for a kitchen cloth? So pause the video, write this sentence, fill in this gap and write your reason. Off you go. Hello, welcome back. So I have written, in conclusion, the best material to use for a kitchen cloth is a towel because it was the most absorbent. You might have written because it soaked up the most water and that means exactly the same thing or you might have just written another reason. That is absolutely fine as long as it makes sense and as long as it links to the investigation. You're not going to say that I think the best material is the towel because it's pink and pink's my favourite colour. That isn't answering the question of our investigation. So as long as it makes sense, your reason will be fine. So now you can write a sentence about how you know, and we know because we tested them, you carried out an investigation. So I'm going to write, I know this because and then think about your reason, what was it about your investigation that told you that it was the most absorbent? So pause the video and finish this sentence. Welcome back. So I have written, I know this because it soaked up the most water when I tested it. Now we can also write a sentence in our conclusion about the materials that we shouldn't use. 
So choose a material from your list that wasn't very good at absorbing or soaking up water and write a sentence about that and you can start with you shouldn't use, so should is a year two word, sh, three letters one sound, uh, d, should and it's short for should not, so we do our apostrophe, shouldn't use and then write your material because and why should you not use that material. So pause the video and do that now. So I have written, you shouldn't use fleece because it repelled the water in my investigation. And the last thing to do is write a sentence linking it back to the reason we did this investigation in the first place. So we know that using kitchen roll every time you need to mop something up, mop up a spillage, isn't a good idea because kitchen roll is single use. It gets used once and then it gets thrown away and it ends up filling up landfill sites. And if you use a cloth to mop things up and then wash the cloth when it gets dirty, it's much better for the environment. So I'd like you to write a sentence to finish your conclusion explaining that. Off you go. Okay, welcome back. I have written, using a cloth is better than kitchen roll as you can reuse it so it is better for the environment. Your sentence won't be exactly the same as mine, but as long as it is explaining why we should be using a cloth instead of kitchen roll that just ends up in landfill sites. Well done everybody, you have worked really hard on your science investigation this week. Maybe you could give your investigation to somebody else in your family to see if they can follow it and see if they come up with the same result as you do.